derivation of the telegrapher's equation based on Dr. Farid Farahman's of Sonoma State and a publication by the University of British Columbia, Canada. We start with our sacred diagram, starting at point X, going over, modeling the inductance of the transmission line, the resistance of the transmission line, getting us to a point X plus DX. In parallel to this, we have the capacitance inherent in the transmission line to a ground point, and we have a leakage conductance typical of the transmission line. We attach quantities to these parameters, 1 over G dx for the leakage conductivity, C dx for the capacitance, R dx for the voltage drop, L dx for the inductance drop. We have a voltage U of X at this point and a voltage U X plus DX at this point. Now then, we have the, volt, the drop in voltage equals to minus IR over a distance DX and the component from the inductor minus DI DT L dx. Notice that that i refers to the current and it is a function of x and t. Divide both sides of the equation by x and note that that is a partial derivative since the voltage u is a function of x and t and we come up with this. The dx cancels out dx cancels out, and that's our equation there. Now then, take a second derivative of both sides. So we end up with d2, du, dx, d2, equals to minus r di dx minus d2i dx dt times L. Now then, we go ahead and do a similar equation for the current. di equals to minus u g dx. Notice that g is the inverse of the resistivity, therefore we can add them like this. And the capacitance term is minus c du dt times dx. As before, we go ahead and divide by x di dx. Again, i being a function of x and t and we end up with over here minus g u and on this side minus c du dt. Notice that now we have an expression for di dx which we can readily plug in to this point here in this equation. So our second derivative equation then becomes d2 du dx2 is equal to minus r times di dx, which in this particular case is going to give us minus g u minus c du dt and then the additional term, which is the cross term, minus d2i dx dt times L. Now then, 
we go ahead and find this cross term by taking the second derivative of this equation. So we end up having d2, this time we apply a derivative with respect to time, of i, and we have dt dx equals to minus g du dt minus c d2u dt squared. So now we have this cross term right here, which we can plug back in to our equation here. We'll go ahead and do that, and we'll come up with d2u dx2 is equal to minus r times this whole mess. I minus g u minus c d u d t minus this whole mess over here times l so minus l times minus g d u d t minus c d two u d t squared. Okay. Now then we go ahead and divide by LC. And we end up having 1 over LC, d2u, dx squared, would equal to RG over LC times u plus RC over LC du dt, we cancel the c's right away, plus LG over LC du dt, we cancel the l's right away, plus LC over LC d2u dt squared both L and C cancel in that last term. After we're done with this, we have 1 over LC d2u dx squared equals 2 d2u dt squared. So we'll bring that term to the front. Okay. And then we can put this term at the very back. But Let's concentrate on the du dt term plus du dt times r over l plus g over c. And then that last term that we just are bringing to the back now, rg over lc times u. In other words, what we have here is an equation that can actually be simplified by making a few definitions, which will be the following. d2u dx squared plus alpha plus beta times du dt plus alpha beta times u equals to c squared d2u dx squared. This is a t. Where c squared equals to 1 over lc by definition, alpha is equal to g over c, again, defined as such, and beta is defined as r over l. 
So as you can see, all the terms equal out. There's the 1 over LC times D2U DX2. The D2U DT squared didn't have any terms in front of it, so there it is by itself. And alpha and beta being these two terms multiply exactly like that. This equation right here is called the telegrapher's equation. And it was worked on by Heaviside in the 1800s. That is the conclusion of this video.